What is Spider-Man best known for? Is it A, his photography, B, popularity in school, or C, his Peter Parkour? The answer is D, his swinging ability. According to Google, Spider-Man weighs 167 pounds. If a pizza weighs 2 pounds, that's like 83 pizza boxes flinging through the sky. Weight like that, free-falling, creates momentum. If a Spider-Man game doesn't respect that momentum, opting to make their swings more animation controlled, then the player won't feel like they're actually swinging. In other words, if you swing towards the end of a longer fall, you should feel the fastest point of speed on the arch of your swing, and depending on when you let go, you should either fling further down the street or launch higher in the air. Spider-Man games that don't do this, like Spider-Man 1, end up feeling cheap. Spider-Man should feel like a real person with a physical presence. With momentum like this that Spider-Man would experience, there comes a large risk. For the player, this is a fun game of acrobatics and dodging structures creatively. But when your failed swing just becomes protected or corrected by the game, there isn't much risk to failing the swing. The only risk is that you'll get to your destination a bit slower or look less cool on the way there. In the two recent Spider-Man games, when Spider-Man hits a wall, you don't feel the momentum coming to a stop. Instead, it just immediately transfers to an upwards running animation. When you get low to the ground, you can't run along the ground. In fact, you're protected and limited to a small buffer zone that you must swing above. Pre-made animations won't cut it if you want a Spider-Man game to feel more authentic. Interacting with the environment isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. There are endless ways that a player might slam into a wall, lamppost, or car, all at various angles, speeds, and heights. Something like Euphorian Physics or NVIDIA's AI-driven physics-based character animation is perfect for a Spider-Man game. These technologies create in-the-moment animations that weren't made beforehand by humans. A human can't consider all the different ways that you may slam into different objects or obstacles. A lifeless ragdoll would do it, but it wouldn't look like it should. These AI models would be able to correct their fall, protect their heads as they fumble, and dodge incoming objects. Throughout the years, Spider-Man games have used various techniques to give players the experience of swinging, and it ultimately boils down to these three. Animation-based 2D, Animation-based 3D, and physics-based 3D. In Spider-Man on the PlayStation 1, swinging was merely a special effect. When the player jumped and pressed the jump button a second time, Spider-Man moved forward through the air, while pretending to shoot and hang from webs as he moved. His webs were obviously attached to nothing, but somehow he was able to make it work. This method was linear, as the player could make no changes to affect the swing once it was initiated other than ending the animation and falling. Maybe Spider-Man is swinging from helicopters or airplanes. That reminds me, this video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. It offers more than 2,000 vehicles to fight with, like tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. Whether you're looking for fast, action-packed matches or more realistic tactile experience, War Thunder offers intense PvP battles at various modes to accommodate all play styles. Every vehicle is extremely detailed down to their individual components and you can customize each vehicle with their in-depth customization system. The details shine in 4K with stunning locations and graphics crafted with immersion in mind. If you're like me, you'll love the destruction that you can cause to enemy vehicles. War Thunder is a Available now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and the previous console generation. Play War Thunder now and register using my link in the description to receive a huge free bonus pack which includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account boosters, and much more. A year after Spider-Man on the PlayStation 1, Treyarch released Spider-Man the Movie Game and essentially used the same system but included the ability to control direction while swinging. Spider-Man would swing continuously while you could turn left, right, or move up and down. This was a drastic improvement from before, but it still lacked any real depth to it. In reality, the only thing that changed was maneuverability. He still just repeated an animation while moving forward and shooting webs at the sky. 
When I was at Treyarch, I was lead programmer of Spider-Man 1. Things had been going along and I wasn't happy with the swinging. It didn't feel like Spider-Man to me. Swinging is kind of like jumping. You jump from building to building, your webs are cosmetic. Spider-Man 1, the game I first made, you're flying through the air and, you're, and your webs are attaching to the sky and the webs are just cosmetic. And these activities, and for me it was, for me the webs that attached to midair were a big part of the problem, but also it just, it was just the, sort of the slow, sedate feeling. Um, it wasn't so much that people wanted realism, it's that people wanted to be Spider-Man. When you imagine what it's like to be Spider-Man, webs attaching to the sky is not part of the fantasy. It, it violates the fantasy of being Spider-Man. They're kind of not doing it for us. And then for some reason, Spider-Man 2 does it for us. Spider-Man 2, which many consider to be the best Spider-Man game for swinging, broke the mold that its predecessors created. Up until last year, when the Insomniac guys made their Spider-Man game, it, it, it was the reigning champion of Spider-Man games. So 15 years, pretty good run. It also broke the mold for superhero games. It introduced an open world city and physics-based swinging. The city was nearly the first of its kind, pioneering streaming techniques to make the city visible at all times with zero loading. This is something no one had really done then. GTA 3 was the closest comparison, which had a much smaller map. In Spider-Man 2, you could now control the direction of your swinging, and even better, you could decide when to let go of your web and when to cast the next one. So I would come in late at night and try to make my own ideas, make my own prototypes, and eventually those prototypes took on a life of their own, and by the time Spider-Man 2 rolled around, we were able to keep iterating on those and eventually end up with what is now, you know, considered a classic game. Your webs were real. They weren't a fake image plopped on the screen to make it look like you were using a web. Now, they had physical properties and actually connected to buildings. If you swung too close around a corner, you'd shorten your web, because part of it collided with the building. You could even cast two webs simultaneously in each direction, suspending yourself in the air above the streets. While it's not necessarily perfectly realistic, because they had to multiply the Earth's gravity by 10, they made it so that you could steer while you were swinging, which is impossible. It found the perfect balance between realism and fun. There were a whole bunch of physical impossibilities that people are just fine with. In our video games, when we can steer in midair, lots of games do it. Spider-Man 2 certainly wasn't the first. Uh, Although physics has nothing to say about that, it just feels right. It's a little like when you go bowling and you, and you, and you let that bowling ball go and it's heading towards the gutter and you sort of, with your whole body you sort of tense up and it's like, like you think you can push that bowling ball just with the effort of your mind. Video games make that real. In Spider-Man 2, while they were prototyping the swinging, they started by adding points to the corners of buildings that the player could connect to. As they tested it, they decided that they needed to add more points to the buildings because it wasn't working. And then in the final version, they found a way to send out infinite points upon the surfaces you'd be near. It would constantly send out rays, or feelers, to the game world as you were swinging, which would look for and create these points. Depending on the direction you'd push the joystick, you'd affect the direction these feelers would cast. This allowed for a more precision-based swinging. These feelers wouldn't be able to cast to anything if you were above the buildings as there'd be nothing for the rays to collide with. This was the death of cloud swinging. Until studios like Beanox and Crystal Dynamics decided to revive it, of course. Ultimate Spider-Man also used physics-based swinging, with real buildings as swinging anchor points. Spider-Man could also climb up his web while swinging. In the older Spider-Man games, you couldn't touch the ground while swinging, or really at all. In Spider-Man PlayStation 1, it was because toxic gas had filled the streets. In Spider-Man 2, enter Electro, during the swinging missions, most of the time the ground would be black and you'd just fall to your death. And even in Spider-Man the movie game, you couldn't go to the street, although this time, at least you could see it. 16 years after Spider-Man 2, Marvel's Avengers featured a playable Spider-Man character. In this game, Spider-Man again utilizes the clouds when swinging. He both runs and swings at this extremely slow speed. There's nothing super about this. No wonder he's always late to everything. I'm sorry for missing class. I was on my way, but... Peter, I don't want to hear excuses. MJ and I had a bet going on whether you would actually show up. I guess you're running late. Ugh. It's about time you got here. Sorry, I'm running a little late, MJ. I've gotten used to it. For about six years, Beanox was offered the rare opportunity to create Spider-Man games. The Amazing Spider-Man 1 was theirs, and it wasn't amazing. It came out nearly 10 years after Spider-Man 2 and Ultimate Spider-Man, yet there we were again, swinging from the sky. 
The sheer lack of effort from these studios can be shocking at times. The LEGO games get away with this because they're LEGO games. No one's expecting anything super realistic in a LEGO game, so it's cool. Clearly, it is possible to make swinging fun and realistic, as we've seen over a decade ago. Unfortunately, all too often, we see studios release poorly executed swinging mechanics in Spider-Man games, just so they can make the deadline or deliver a lackluster product to fulfill their contractual obligation. Like any form of media, when you phone it in, it turns out bad. The bright side to Beanox's terrible management of the Spider-Man IP is that Insomniac, a studio that would prove to actually respect the character, was entrusted to exclusively create a Spider-Man game. A Spider-Man game that went on to sell 33 million copies, spawn a tie-in sequel, a second game, and a Wolverine game. Thanks to Beanox's failures, we were given one of the best Spider-Man games ever created, Spider-Man 2018. Spider-Man from Insomniac gets nearly everything right. The story, combat, animations, city, graphics, voice acting, music, and finally, the swinging, are amazing. They put so much thought into his swinging that they even had the voice actor do two takes depending on whether or not he was exerting himself while swinging. You said a mouthful, Doc. Take care. You said a mouthful, Doc. Take care. While almost everything about this game is amazing, and if you remove nostalgia, it's my favorite Spider-Man game, and just one of my favorite games in general, it does have its flaws. When swinging in Spider-Man PS4, things seem very controlled. Controlled in a good way at times, and in a bad way at other times. The system Insomniac created works well to keep you moving, but at the detriment of your own freedom. It holds your hand a bit too much sometimes. If you were to simply run forward and push no buttons, Spider-Man would jump and flip over obstacles, swing, and run pretty much all on his own. Why am I even here? It seems like he's got it all covered. Swinging in Spider-Man can feel kind of pre-made or curated. You can't really mess up. In Spider-Man 2, if you messed up, you were punished. If you miscalculated your swing, you'd hit the wall, lose all momentum, and have to start over. But in Spider-Man PS4, mess-ups are quietly swept under the rug, and your character is forced into sudden animations and course corrections that negate your blunder. One of the most glaring issues I have with the swinging is what happens when you get near the ground. In Spider-Man 2, if you got too close to the ground, Spider-Man would begin running, feet connected to the floor. But if you try that in Spider-Man for PS4, you'll realize that there's an invisible barrier that keeps you swinging just above the ground. You can even enter the swinging animation while you're practically falling beneath the zone. This makes for an awkward moment where you can see Spider-Man levitate up to the swingable spot before he even has a web to pull on. This issue is more noticeable in places like the park, where there aren't any buildings or surfaces tall enough for Spider-Man to believably swing from. So you get this really weird sideways animation that's compensating for the low treetops. Spider-Man 2's swinging system made it difficult to swing through the park, and that was fine, because it made players think and maneuver differently in that area. So low swinging goes to Spider-Man 2. You shouldn't have to fake it this hard to let the player swing. It's fine if we hit the ground, or run along it. It adds a risk-reward system. The reward is getting as close as we can to the ground and pulling off cool tricks. The risk is that we may stumble and hit a car or another object. Don't take that out of a Spider-Man game. It's crucial. The whole reason you're swinging is to not fall to the ground. So if you make it so that we can never hit the ground, why are we swinging? Swinging can at times feel predetermined in Spider-Man PS4. This is what makes it look so good. These fluid animations and this movement were carefully curated by the developer. In Spider-Man 2, when you shoot a web, that web is yours to hold on to or let go. You decide what happens and when that happens. Heck, if you want, you can shoot another web and hold on to that one forever too. This lets you do so many things that you can't do in Spider-Man PS4. You can swing in circles around structures. You can do a full flip upside down by not letting go. But in Spider-Man for the PS4, the game decides when you let go of the web. You can let go sooner if you're trying to pick up speed or stop swinging, but you can't hold it forever. It will force you to let go, because it's not really, truly, completely physics-based. Pre-made animations and set limitations are really running the show, and they've got different ideas than you. Spider-Man 2 wins swinging control because basically, you actually are in control. 
Spider-Man 2 had stores where you could purchase upgrades to your swinging. Upgrades that would enhance your speed or let you do new tricks. If you wanted to do flips and tricks, you'd just spam the button in the air to make the character quickly flip and spin before you'd have to shoot another web. Aside from that, there really wasn't much to look at. Spider-Man would shoot webs the same way every single time and there was no variation. The two newest Spider-Man games absolutely demolish Spider-Man 2 in this regard. Peter swings differently all the time, alternating between different animations and poses. Miles jumps and flips all over the screen while he's swinging. He brings a style to the game that feels impromptu, as if he's just relaxing and freestyling different tricks while he flies through the air. He'll even swing or fall backwards at times. The coolest one is when he does his signature hanging upside down from the web pose while swinging. Due to the pre-made, animated nature of the newer Spider-Man games, the speed at which you can swing doesn't seem very fast. Comparatively, Spider-Man 2 lets you whiz through the city at blurringly fast speeds. Meanwhile, Miles is more focused on looking cool rather than saving the day. After Spider-Man was released on PC, modders even added speed mods which made Spider-Man move faster. Momentum feels pretty natural in Spider-Man PS4, as the more downward speed you have at the beginning of your swing will convincingly cause you to fly up higher if you let go at the peak of your swing. Both games handle this very well. Spider-Man 2 can feel like you're going so fast that you can mess up and ding off a wall, ruining your run, while in Spider-Man 4, you'll typically be saved by a sudden animation like a wall run or an adjustment to your bad location, bringing you out of it even before you've shot your web. It's like playing with safeties on. Spider-Man PS4 is extremely well made when you look at its animations, but even more difficult animations to pull off, like the ones that have you interact with the world, look pretty great. Sometimes it can look awful, where you can obviously see that you're plopped into the correct position to play out the animation, but for the most part, these animations go unnoticed. This isn't even a feature in Spider-Man 2. Wall running and swinging are the whole shtick. He could slowly slide down the sides of walls and charge jumps, which isn't possible in the newer games, but things were limited to the basic shapes of the buildings. In the newer Spider-Man games, you can interact with the environment much more. You can run along the side of a building, web around its corner, and continue running. You can jump through fire escapes while running, and even web your way up them. Cars, ledges, and rails are all objects that the animation system considers as you traverse through them. While it can make things feel out of your control, it still looks cooler than anything you could do in Spider-Man 2. In general, Spider-Man 2 feels riskier, while Spider-Man PS4 is more user-friendly. I think the solution is simple. Keep the current system in place for the average player, for someone who wants to cruise around the city without thinking too hard. But create an advanced swinging option with an entirely updated system that offers a wider range of abilities and features that certain other players would enjoy more. This lets everyone have their pizza and eat it too. The best of both worlds. I don't want to hate on Spider-Man PS4 because I love the game. It's not my intention to make it sound bad. In fact, Insomniac did an amazing job on it and I know they'll do an amazing job on its sequel. I feel like the game gets so much praise and rightly so, but that we overlook or don't talk about the few things that it can improve on. These improvements are few, but they would make the sequel that much better. The perfect Spider-Man game is within our grasp, and if anyone can deliver it, it's Insomniac. And don't forget, you can play War Thunder on your platform of choice and register using the link in my description to get those free bonuses. You don't want to miss out on the intense vehicle action that only War Thunder can offer.